and you put yourself on the line long enough, and he did both of those, you're bound to attract a following and word of mouth and everything else. I think, I think that put him in good stead when he decided to experiment a bit on the records. Springsteen's experimentation was to branch off in arguably his most daring direction yet. A self-imposed period of exile produced a series of demo sessions for the next album. While versions were recorded with the E Street Band, it was decided that the solo versions carried more resonance. For the first time in his career, Springsteen's recorded output would not have the backing of his usual accomplices. It's hard to know what would have happened to Bruce without the E Street Band, but the E Street Band from the beginning, you know, kind of got woven into his shows. I mean, not just as players, but as characters. It's almost as if this world of Asbury Park is what was traveling around. It wasn't just a band. It was this entire world that Bruce had created. And, you know, this cast of characters was traveling along with them. You know, so eventually everybody would get their long, extended introduction. The sound he created sounded almost indistinguishable from the E Street Band. It just wasn't as good. So that's his sound, and you know, and I think he's he's. Uh, it doesn't work for all of his music, but I think when he wants to have a rock and roll band, it's you know, you couldn't sound any better than that playing Bruce Springsteen music. As well as the practicalities of recording, the aesthetic of the next album would also prove yet another marked difference for Springsteen. Nebraska was released on September the twentieth, nineteen eighty-two. Its stark, haunting and lonely sound has made it one of Springsteen's most distinctive albums, as well as going on to enthrall and influence a generation of singer-songwriters. Each song can stand on its own with just a guitar and a voice, and it's hard to have, it's hard to write songs that can really stand up over time for, for so many years, just with, uh, an, just sitting down at a campfire and playing an instrument and singing to people. And so he's got the quality of great lyrics and great melodies, and there's a lot of space. And Nebraska is beautiful because it is so spacious. My name is Joe Roberts. I work for the state. I'm a sergeant out of Burnville. Barracks number. You know, it has the quality of being a thematic and whole and that the production which is so stark and in, 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 in four track and spare is lends it uh, a quality that uh, you know that that confers gravity and, and the songs are grave and the songs are beautiful a lot of younger musicians look to nebraska you know because i think for younger musicians particularly like sort of you know indie musicians getting through the scale of what the bruce idea has become requires a certain amount of work Whereas Nebraska is just there for them. I was turned on to Nebraska a few years ago when a bunch of people did a cover record of it. Um, and so I heard their versions and then I was interested in it and listened to his. At that time I was doing pretty stripped down four track demos and writing in a more folk narrative style than I do now. And that was a great time for me to hear those because like I said, it was just a pure song. Great melodies, great lyrics, and a lot of um, interesting guitar parts that make up good solid songs and that's what I needed to hear at that time when I was doing real simple stripped back records and also demos in particular just getting it out on my demo like I was using a four track to record my demos for years and that's what he did Nebraska on so it was cool to relate to that way. I think he's been a boon for American music in general. Um, it's just great when there are people like Bruce Springsteen who can come along and raise the bar for everyone and, and really push people to to find their true voice, whatever voice that is, and to express it with honesty. And I think that that's, that honesty is tends to be a quality that people like all around the world. They made some very interesting choices in terms of how to put that music out. You know, I, I think that uh, for decades now, there's been this legend of electric Nebraska and what electric Nebraska sounds like. Well, I think we know what electric Nebraska sounds like in a lot of ways, because it sounds like Born in the USA. I mean, Born in the USA is electric Nebraska in some ways. With the Nebraska material that was released, uh, we're very lucky, and he was very lucky, that his original demos um, that had that really um, 
singular, one-of-a-kind magic of sounding as haunted and, and desolate as they do, that they were able to clean that cassette up enough to get it out. Um, I think there's a world in which they weren't able to make that happen. There's a world in which um, they would have had to have, have re-recorded those songs and either we wouldn't have Nebraska in the form that it's in, in, in the form of like a really dark, haunting thing, um, or they would have tried to recreate that and failed and it wouldn't be the legendary record that it is. The only other record I can think of that came, came about in a comparable way would be a, one like Lucky Town, which also had sort of an element of spontaneity to it, um, perhaps less satisfying, although I do think that was a better record than people recognized at the time. But in, in any case, I think we all knew when Nebraska came out that this was different uh, and that this was special um, and that this was uh, perhaps uh, a significant um, step uh, on, on a journey that was very much ongoing. Springsteen's new sound was met with a fresh contextual comparison that he was following in the tradition of American musical figureheads such as Woody Guthrie. I really wanted to find something good about Woody Guthrie's music. There's reams of stuff written about Woody Guthrie. I've read three books about Woody Guthrie. Four. There's nothing, nothing about his music, nothing. People talk about his words forever. And yet the fact of the matter is that there is a sprightliness about the way he delivers a song. Springsteen can't do it. There's a sense in which, yeah, I think that Springsteen is a better lyricist than Guthrie. Um, and, uh, and he certainly, his worldview is more complicated. Um, but he's not as funny. Funny does not come easy to him, especially in songs. On stage it does. Not, not, uh, not when he's writing songs for some reason, which is, that's a negative. And so, you really have to want to listen to that record. To listen to it. it does not, it's not going to make you listen to it. You're going to have to say, yes, Bruce, I want to hear what you have to say about this stuff. Nebraska was by far Springsteen's darkest album to date, an uncomfortable medley of songs encompassing everything from serial killers, doomed gangsters, and downtrodden all-American rejects. Bruce Springsteen likes to say that uh, his songwriting endeavors to fathom the deep water from the well that he tries to go way down in that well and come up with something that resonates within himself because if it resonates with himself, it'll resonate with his audience, is what he says. And then he goes on to say, you know, that if, when you create something, you didn't know how you did it, that's when you really made something. And I tell you what, you know, some deep water is best left not disturbed. And he sure disturbs it on Nebraska. Uh, you know, you know the story of its creation. You know, he locked himself away, so to speak. He was in his bedroom in his house, and I believe it was in Red, uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. He has a little four-track T-Act there, and he produces these demos all on his own.